Cleveland saw the applause. Bring it up, bring it up. Bring in some cheering. What can say? Desiree Bond! Yes! Hell fucking oh. Thank you guys, too. Wait, where's DC? Hey, girl, hey, America Pride. How, like, just you, you congratulations, you fucking escaped that shit. Um, like, no, I mean, you should try to stay. I would say, don't try to stay here, because they have a show here called Border Force. It's like cops, but for people who are not racist, just xenophobes, and they will hunt you down in your house. I watched it when I came over, and they were like, you have to watch this. And I just watched hours of Border Force. Like, these people don't give a fuck. They will find me. I will pay you all of my money to stay in this country. I live here now. It's totally worth it. Just always say you're visiting and keep smiling. Uh, if anyone asks anything, you're like, oh my God, I don't know what you're talking about. In the most over-American voice you can possibly muster. Um, anyway, hi everybody else. This is a comedy show. I should probably uh, talk to you guys. Oh, you're so fucking nice. God damn it, Brighton. Does everybody say that when they come here? You're so lovely. Like, I live in London now, so I work a lot in London. I literally was doing a show a week ago in central London, walking around like with, you know, and it, it gets ruder the closer to zone one that you get. It's like the most <laughs> asshole people. And this guy was like, you know, everyone's in a rush and I'm trying to rush to get to my show because I'm late and he's in a rush and he's desperately trying to cut me off and he like goes right in front of me and elbows me so hard in the tit that I saw stars, right? But <laughs> then he had the nerve to whirl around and glare at me like I titted him in the elbow. <laughs> like that, that's not a fucking thing. Like no fight has ever started like, hey buddy! <laughs> Because if it does, you won that fucking fight, girl. Like, he's going to be so confused. You won that shit. Um, so I was, okay, so I was in an Uber, like, uh, about three weeks ago, and I, I heard this song, and I'm certain it is a real song, and it, okay, so you know how whenever you're in an Uber, right? The Uber driver's always trying to get, like, five stars, so he's always being like, do you need any more water? Here's a hard candy. Do you need a tissue? You're like, fucking leave me alone and get there faster, right? But, like, usually for me, they'll try to be like, oh, do you want the radio station on anything? And they'll look in the rear view and sort of silently judge me and put it on Capital FM or some other hip-hop kind of oriented station. I'm like, okay, that's fine. I prefer silence, but you'll get your stars, right? So there was this a song that came on, and I think it's Trap. I don't know what rap is anymore, because I'm 40 now. I don't understand culture anymore. I think it's Trap. There's a lot of synth and stuff going on. But the refrain in the chorus, and I'm certain this is it, because I heard it twice, was, throw your pussy through the roof! <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. First of all, has anybody else heard this song? No? Okay, look, can we at least then agree that we all live in a world where that song probably does exist? Okay, thank you, right? Because the whole time, I mean, it was showing my age because the, the first thing I thought was like, well, I mean, you don't want to go throwing a pussy through a roof. Do you know what I mean? Like, obviously, these kids know nothing about home ownership. It's the, the wet's going to sink in. That's going to be tens of thousands of pounds. Throw it into the conservatory. The orchids will love it. But then I had to try to understand why this guy kept screaming to throw your pussy through the roof, right? Because I was just like, I don't get the, like, I do understand what it's like to be a woman in a club and just be like, you know what? You want this? Go fucking get it. Go. Just go, right? I get that, but surely that's not what this dude was talking. Just go fetch. Just go find it and I will be gone by then, right? But then I realized it's like a dance thing, right? Like, he's telling the women that he wants them to, like, twerk so hard that their vulva dislodges and goes through the shingle. Like, finally, more than one woman gets a space at the same time. It's actually quite a progressive song that he's created here. And I, you know, I'm not trying to harsh that, right? Because I don't want to yuck anybody's yum. Like, that's probably somebody's fucking jam, right? You know? And I have danced to morally questionable music before, so I totally get it. I just hope, for the sake of equity and parody, that there are female trap stars out there writing songs like, smack your dick right out the door! <laughs> You know, when a guy's being such a gentleman, he just swipes his own schlong right out in front of you so you can get out of the door easier. I don't know. Tuck your balls between your cheeks. <laughs> when he's so busy not grinding on you at the club, he just makes a nice fruit bowl for everybody else. And <laughs> I don't know. Grow some titties of your own! 
Uh, honestly, that's just about how older men tend to uh, take on man boobs and more estrogen. They start to listen to you more and become a lot more sensitive. I like that about you older guys. Um, I'm definitely in like the older guy segment of my like uh, a life because as I've just mentioned, or will probably mention 30,000 more times, I just turned 40 this year. Um, and I am 40 and have recently re-become single, so I fucked it up, you guys. And um, Okay, give us, give us a shout uh, tonight if you are single. Okay, so I heard all of the 20-somethings who were excited about it. All right. Give me a shout if you're 30 or over and single. Okay, okay, one dude and a bunch of dismayed women. That sounds accurate. Right? Oh, man. It just, it's not like, because the thing is, when you're 20, of course you're excited about being single. Everyone wants to fuck you. All right? 20-year-olds, 30-year-olds, 40-year-olds, everybody wants to fuck you. When you're 40, everyone's like, what happened? What went wrong? You know, and like, okay, so I don't know if anyone is like me, because obviously live, we live in the age of internet dating and it makes dating weird. Um, have you ever fucked someone just to get rid of them? <laughs> I heard a scream of acknowledgement back there, girl. Yes, oh my God, yes. Sometimes it's just the easiest way to get, you know, because the thing is, if you want to be sure as a woman that you never see a guy again, just fuck him once. He will not call. He will be on the other side of the earth at all times from you. It's a self-imposed restraining order that he's implemented. That's a sure shot. Just knock it out. And also, a lot of times, like you, real, like, you realize that the thing is picking up momentum, but it's not going anywhere you want to go. So you're just like, I got to tuck and roll and get out of this car. The easiest way to do that is just to be like, let's race to the finish line. Cool, cool, right? And so I think also, mostly it is because we now live in an age where we we primarily internet date, right? Like you can't just meet a person in the wild anymore. That shit's insane, right? You have to go on a fucking useless app to do it. And the thing is, by the time that you've actually met that person that you've matched with and started talking to, all that stuff that you'd spend the first four or five dates on, all that getting to know you shit, all that stuff's been blown on WhatsApp, right? You are, you've got it all, you've talked about everything, you've decided to shave and meet this person in real life, which means at this point, it is just a casting. Like you've already placed them in the lead role in the rom-com in your mind, and they just need to fucking learn their lines and show up to the set on fucking time, right? So it's just a lot of expectation for anyone to meet you for the first time underneath, right? Because see, what happens to me, I've been on three Bumble dates in the past six weeks, and they've all gone pretty much the same way, right? So I'll show up to the agreed upon pub like 15, 20 minutes late, you know, because I read some listicle that was like, make him wait for it, girl, you know? Like, I did the show where I put on a full face of makeup and then took half of it off because I didn't want to be desperate, right? And so like, I'll get there like ready to make my entrance. This asshole is nowhere in the pub. Three levels of pub. He is nowhere to be found. I get a, ten, a text 10 minutes after that saying, oh, the district line's acting up. Sorry, I'll be there as soon as I can. And I'm like, likely story. I'm checking TFL, right? So in the meantime, I'm sitting there like with all of my expectations deflated and I can't have dinner because I'm waiting for him to do that. So I go to the bar, get an extra large glass of white wine so that by the time he shows up, I am rip shit drunk, ready to meet my future husband. Like, Come on, man, I got my dress tucked in my panties. Let's do this shit, right? It's just like, just edging on this dude, right? And so like, he'll saunter in and be all kind of cavalier, like, oh yeah, sorry, let me buy a, f a round, blah, 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 whatever. And then he'll do this shit like after he's talked to you for five minutes about God knows what, you're still fuming, right? And then he'll say this thing like, so what are you into? And you're like, Motherfucker, read the dossier, all right? There's a profile for a reason. I worked on that shit for an hour. I had a friend check my fucking work, okay? We have been talking for a full week. We have been over this, all right? We both read Vonnegut. We're both in Ravenclaw, all right? Like, I'm from LA, you're from Northampton. Fucking go, I'm 40, I don't have time for this shit. We're gonna die. We're dying, let's go, right? And like, you, I have to take it down just like a couple, you know, like, okay, come on, this is reality. Like, you actually left the house, you like this person, talk to him. And like, you know, he'll be sitting there telling me about his interests in his life, and he seems like a totally nice guy, like, kind of too nice. You know, like, you know when you're talking to someone and they're telling you about their hopes and their dreams and their future, and you can start to see their future wedding photo take shape, and you are not in it? <laughs> Like, I'm looking at this thing and I am not the one standing next to this guy wearing a 500 pound hairdo that's essentially a bun with some garden foliage in it. And like, 
I definitely don't want to go to a bunch of like awkward family events where I have to pretend that his nan isn't being casually racist because I tend to date white dudes. And they always have a nan who like sits there and persists in calling you Condoleezza every time you come by. Because that bitch can never remember my name. She just knows it's exotic. And I'm like, I don't even look like that bitch. She's from like 15 years ago. Update your racism, nan. Come on. Like, you want to stay alive? Keep up, all right? And like, I certainly don't want to have to wake up in the future one day early on one of my Saturday mornings to hold up a hand-painted sign I've had to make for the 5K that asshole decided he needed to run, all right? <laughs> for, you know, for muscular dystrophy or something, you know? Just so then that a bunch of poor kids who can barely get a spoon in their mouths have to show up and figure out how to high-five him for a photo for the Croydon Gazette. Like, asshole, could you work out your ego on someone else? They could have been horseback riding on Saturday. Like, fuck you. Like, don't do this to them. Like, I get, I'm sorry, I get it, right? You know, when he's, he's trying to, like, show that picture to you. Oh, let me just put this out here, first of all, though. If any of you are single and you're a guy, and if any one of your five profile pictures, and that is the correct number, if any one of your five <laughs> profile pictures features one of you with a number on your chest from having run in a race, I would rather see a swastika or a pentagram, like an ISIS flag. Like there's so many other good conversation starters. Like at least we'd have something to talk about at that point. I know what your number means. It means you're a fucking self-important asshole who wants a fucking cookie for having run around a Tesco extra car park, all right? Like, I'm sorry, 5K's not that much, and I know because I can do it, all right? Like it's not that big of a fucking deal. Like, and I get it, he's trying to be like, oh, you know, look, I'm trying to say that I'm fit, but I also care, right? And I'm like, yeah, but you could have done all that without advertising it to the fucking world. Like, run in the race, raise some money for charity, write about in your fucking journal, take it to your grave. How about that, right? <laughs> like, just, you don't need to, like, advertise. I'm so, because I see that picture of him running in the race, and he's like, I'm fit, I help people. And I'm thinking, like, oh, so basically he's saying if we have any problems in our relationship, he can run away from them in 12 to 15 minutes flat. You know, just, you know, just win that fucking thing. I just, okay, I get a lot of this too, right? Because as I, I mentioned, my bracket has kind of moved up, uh, like older. So I've moved into the sort of 35 to 55 bracket that like, basically that bracket that nobody markets shit to anymore. You know, when you stop understanding commercials, like you're my guy, right? Like if, they, if people don't want to sell you shit unless you have a kid anymore, you're my fucking guy, right? And so a lot of these guys, you know, on um, the profile, it'll have these things about kids, right? And it's like all the things about kids and there's all these options you can check. And it's like, have kids, want more. Have kids, don't want any more. Don't want kids. And then there's just this option that says, someday. <laughs> and all these 55 year old guys are ticking, someday. Someday, someday, asshole. Someday was 1999 for you. Someday, someday. Are you fucking kidding me? Someday. What do you? Someday. What, okay. So what? We're gonna date for a year, and you can miraculously get a kid into me somehow, and we can have his graduation party at your wake. Like, fuck you. That's fucking rude and just like delusional, right? But like, I, I don't understand that being in this body because obviously as a guy, you get to have someday, right? You, you, can, you can have kids until the day before the day you die, right? Like you can be 91 sitting on a park bench with that permanent boner you have from the heart medication you definitely have been prescribed, right? Just sitting there feeding pigeons and you know, and like, this 16-year-old skater girl could biff her ollie off the guardrail, land on your dick, and nine months later, baby Tony Hawk's crawling out of her. Like, you, you get to have that option if you want it, right? Whereas, like, I, I am 40 now, right? So I spent all of my 20s and 30s spending a lot of time and a lot of money trying not to accidentally have a kid. And I am 40 fucking years old. I couldn't accidentally have a kid if I applied myself. Do you know what I mean? Like there's no, the only way I could accidentally have a kid is if I was like, um, if I was just walking down the pavement and then there was a mom who was walking the other direction to me and she had like four or five of those little free range kids running around her, you know, the organic cage free runs that they don't want to rein in, right? And with no spatial awareness whatsoever. And if one of those kids just ran so hard into my crotch that they popped up there like a moon cup, just like, boop, you know? And then I'd be like, oh, uh, well, uh, ma'am, I think you'll find that possession is nine-tenths of the law. Um, my DNA's all over this one, so I, I don't know what to tell you. And she'd be like, you know, fair play. I couldn't handle all five. You get one, right? It's great, you know? 
And so I just, you know, like I, I don't know what the right way to do it is now. There was a way I did it before and that way is gone. And like I've tried meeting people out in the wild and in the raw and that goes fucking awry, okay? Because I, okay, so I was in a long-term relationship. I moved here for the guy and it was lovely and then it wasn't anymore and it was just all arguments and we lived in Croydon and things got bad, right? So I let, you know, that's a sure sign that you're kind of going down there. Anyway, so I like, so, you know, we break up and then like, it was right kind of before Halloween, so when I finally got a chance to move, it was right before then. And so my friends all stepped up and they were like, okay, Desiree, like, it's your time. We're going out this weekend. We're all dressing up as sexy whatever the fuck with glitter on, all right? We're going to a Halloween party. You're going to get laid. It's going to be great. And I was like, great, right? And I knew it was my night, too, because you know that thing, ladies, where you're, like, putting on makeup in the bathroom and you're drinking wine and getting yourself ready and you see yourself in the mirror and you're like, oh, fuck. I'm gonna get fucked tonight. <laughs> like, you know when you can just sense it? Like, I'm like, I don't know if I'm ovulating or the moon is full, but my face is symmetrical as shit right now. <laughs> like, this is on, like if you want it, that is your night, you got it, right? And I knew it was mine, right? So we go out and, you know, and at this point, I just need to get some like palate cleansing dick, like some ginger, just start over, shake the Etch-A-Sketch dick, right? You know, like just get back on the old horse. So I walk into the party with my friends and I see the dude right away out of the corner of my eye and I know it's him, because I see him and he's like a mid 40s white dude with a ponytail. Yeah, I know, and I was like, oh, look, he's making bad life choices too, okay. I see you, I see you, I seen it, all right. I'll see you in about 45 minutes, you know. And I didn't even have to introduce myself because I went to put my bag and my coat down. I turned around, he was right fucking here. He's like, hello, my name's Liam, how are you? I'm like, yes, you know, I know what we're going to do tonight. Could you please, just enjoy the party. I'll see you in an hour. Fuck, you know, go, right? Let me at least walk in the door. So a good hour goes by, and then he circles back around, and we start chatting. And, like, you know, we're drinking all the drinks, whatever. My friends kind of keep coming over, bringing drinks and whispering to me, and they're like, hey, Des, how's it going? And I'm like, great, you know? And they're like, hey, Des, are you sure you don't want us to help you out? This guy seems like a creep. And I'm like, back off, Stephanie! I know what I am doing. I will cry to you about this on Tuesday, all right? <laughs> Shit, I need something to talk about in therapy this week. Fuck off, you know? You know when you're just going through all the warning signs and they're flipping over the hood of the car and you're like, wee, it's Thelma and Louise, let's go, right? Like, it was one of those nights I was like, get out of the way, I know how I'm gonna ruin this week, okay? So. You know, we get, we're like 11 drinks deep with this guy at this point, right? And I'm like, okay, you've done the very British thing and got me so drunk, none of this will be any good. Let we, let's go home, right? So we go, we go back to his place, right? We get an Uber back to his place, and I have to give the guy kudos, right? Has he pulled the most astounding white boy move I have ever seen pulled in my life because he gave me another drink when we came in. I sat down, and from nowhere, he produced a guitar and it, <laughs> that was amazing. There was just an audible groan of like, oh, he is one of ours, isn't he? Fuck. Ah, oh, we do be doing that, you know? Fair, it's, <laughs> I mean, you know, and he started serenading me with Pearl Jam songs on his guitar. Like, he really went into it. He was like, can't find a better man. <laughs> Why would he choose that specific song? Like, is he trying to rub it in? I swear to God, it was that song. And he went full tilt, you know, when he's like, he's like, hey, ho, hey. You remember in the 90s where dudes would sing and you couldn't tell if they were having a feeling or a shit, but you wish they just like, get it over with, you know, let's say, hey, freedom, freelance. And I'm like, okay, cool. You sung me the song of your people. Can we please go bang now, right? So, so we go into the bedroom, right? And so, you know, like things are getting hot and heavy, clothes are coming off. I do, I perform a little bit of my job. I'll be honest with you guys. I just wanted to show I was enthusiastic to be employed at Liam Industries that evening. <laughs> You know, say hey, these are my special skills, just so you know. And I mention this gratuitous detail only because I was there for like a minute, two minutes tops, and this guy came in my eye. In my eye! Oh my God! I, like, dude, I was just, the thing is, if this ever happens to you, it is not only extremely painful, it is also so embarrassing. Like, I am 40 years old, you guys. I made it through nearly two decades of fucking not once in the eyes, not once. Apparently, I was the Muhammad Ali of blowjobs or something, because I was like, no, 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 way. 
Nah, that's right. Those are your kids. You put them on your wall, mate. I'm not the one, right? And then I let my guard down for one moment and bam, right in the eye socket, right? And if, if this ever happens to you, right? Like, gentlemen, I know you know your stuff smells like bleach, but it burns like it too. It burns so bad. It is a chemical burn. Like, it just grows and it gnaws at your eye socket. And like... I'm sitting there and I'm trying to still be cute, right? Because I think I can save this moment. So I'm just like doing this and fanning my eye like I've just won a Miss America pageant or something. And I'm like, I can't believe this is happening to me right now. But inside my mind, I'm like, oh my God, I needed fucking medical assistance, right? And he's all like, what happened? And I mean, what do you mean what happened? You bust a nut in my eye, Liam. Get an eye wash station immediately. There's been an accident on the playground. Get a cup of milk. I don't know what you do for this, but run, okay? And so he's like, ugh, and I'm like, uh, around a house I do not recognize, right? I finally find the bathroom and I'm just cupping lukewarm water into my eye for five solid minutes, right? Okay, so then I, at this point I can see again, like I have contacts, the shit's behind the contacts. I think they're glued to my skull, right? And I'm going through every nightmare scenario. I walk back into the room, this guy's asleep. Like, 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 I just came real hard asleep, like the like, mm, mm, like asleep, right? Yeah, apparently there was recoil on that nutty bus and it just knocked him into the headboard and into the fetal position or something. So like, at this point, it's four in the morning, there's a sliver of bed for me to lay on like a sarcophagus until the sun comes up and I can figure out what to do. And so I had to spend the entire rest of that weekend Googling eye aids and eye herpes. Yeah. Yeah, which no one in this room should ever do because they're real. It's a real fucking thing. Yes, I didn't know you could get it like that. And now I'm sitting here and I'm like, Jesus Christ, like, I don't even know how I'm supposed to get tested for this. Like, do I have to go to a hospital or a spec savers? Like, what's the fucking protocol? All right, I have to get out of here. That's my time. You guys have been so lovely. Thank you so much. My name's Desiree Burke. Desiree Butch! <laughs> My favorite part of that was the fact that where you spontaneously applauded the Muhammad Ali of blowjobs. As an audience, that's where you decided, yeah! Now we're in that story, that was great. Give Desiree another round of applause, she was great. Have you had a good night? A couple of things. Um, I've been asked by about 17 different people to wish Rihanna a round of uh, happy birthday. It's her birthday. Give her a round of applause. Wish her a happy birthday. Give Dave another round of applause and all the comedian staff that make this happen. This gig is on the last Thursday of every month. It's always absolutely fucking brilliant. The headliner next month is somebody called Lauren Patterson, who's won all the awards. It's been absolutely bloody brilliant. Um, and so do come along for that. Buy, you can, I, think, I think you can buy a ticket as you leave today, but it's fucking great. This was a great night, was it not? Yeah. And you get the satisfaction of seeing some of the newest acts before they become absolutely fucking huge and you can't buy tickets for them anymore. Um, and so, uh, listen, give a round of applause to all the acts you've seen. I've been Barry. You've been fucking awesome. DC, Poland, uh, Belgium, Light. And um, I'll see you again. Thanks so much for coming. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>